Okay, the first question that you had for homework was an actual FRQ problem from many, many years ago, which I guess I say that a lot. Um, and I've given this as a final exam question on the first semester final when we hadn't even covered harmonic motion. Um, I gave this anyway, and I just took the part C off of it. And we only did part A and B as a final exam question. And it's amazing how many people blew on this question. They just could not answer it. Um, so there's a skill here that probably is good for us to recognize that comes up occasionally. A simple pendulum consists of a bob of mass 1.8 kilograms attached to a string of length 2.3 meters. The pendulum is held at an angle of 30 degrees as shown. On the figure, draw a free body diagram showing and labeling the forces acting on the bob. Okay, so of course you're all going to start with the easy one. You're going to draw a force of gravity straight down. Get the chat open here and see if it will stay open today. Good. Uh, FG pointing straight down. And then hopefully you chose to put a FT this direction and an FT this direction. And whether or not you actually give those any kind of like second subscript, uh, like an FTX or horizontal or FT1 and FT2, I don't think it would have mattered. I think that uh, they just wanted to see that you knew that those were the forces that were present. Those are the only forces that are present. So if you put anything else on there, um, stop doing that. Okay, uh, recognize why those are the only ones. Um, calculate the tension on the string. Okay, well, it doesn't say which string we're supposed to be calculating the tension on. So uh, it would have probably on the actual AP test question. We'll just calculate the tension on both strings. So I'm going to call them T1 and T2 so we know which one it is that I'm working with. In order for us to solve part uh, B, uh, I'm going to make two F net equations. I'm going to make an X direction F net equation, and I'm going to make a Y direction F net equation. Okay, I'll probably start with the Y direction one because I always feel more comfortable talking about gravity. It's the easiest force to talk about in this class because it's so natural. So in the vertical direction, we have FG. Now, in my answer document, I'm only putting those three blue, I think so, yeah, maybe. Uh, those three blue forces. But once I go to my test booklet, I can now break up FT1. And I agree with you, Kumar, because the problem with FT1 is it sucks in terms of the fact that it has components. But if you're saying FT2 is better than FG, well, then you're just crazy. That's just crazy talk. Um, we have to break up FT1 into its two components because in the two F net equations that I'm making right now, they can only deal with those directions. You can't deal with a force that's at an angle very easily in this class. Um, there are ways that we can do it, uh, but we're going to do everything we can to avoid it. So F net in the Y direction, let's finish that thought, is equal to FG minus FT1's Y component. And then in the horizontal direction, F net is equal to FT2 minus FT1's X component. I forgot the T in there. FT1X and FT1Y. Okay, so now we have two F net equations. And if we wanna just keep this thought going forward, since the pendulum is not moving, we've got FT2 minus, problem is we have two unknowns here. I can substitute for FT1X because here's what I know about FT1X is if FT1 points this way, FT1X is this component, and FT1Y is this component, and the angle that is right here could be considered 60 degrees because the angle that is up here is 30 degrees, right? So if that's a 30, sorry, that 30 doesn't look very good. If that's a 30 degree angle, then that tells me that this right here is a 60 degree angle. So now you have some options as to how you write FT1X's substitution. If you decide to call it based on the 30 degree angle is what I'm gonna do because I am not, um, I am not a hater of switching sine and cosine to match the reference angle. So for me, FT1 will always be known as FT1 times sine of 30 degrees, right? Because it is the side opposite the 30 degree angle. 
If you can't handle that because you are a hater of switching sine and cosine, then you have to say cosine of 60 degrees. You'll get the same answer. You think T2 is better? See, I think T1. T, T1 is one of my favorite movies of all time. Uh, T2 is good, though. That was a good movie. Um, I never saw the third one. And uh, I, there, I got to say for a while, even though I came to not like Arnold Schwarzenegger because of uh, when he became governor, um, for a while there, I would have to say he was one of my favorite actors because my two of my favorite movies when I was like by ninth grade were Terminator 1 and Predator 1. So, I mean, he had two of my like top five movies, but my top, top movie was Die Hard. So um, Bruce Willis still had the, had the top spot. Uh, so now back to what I was talking about, which is not being a hater, is my FT1Y, if I'm gonna stay with a 30 degree angle, is the cosine of 30 degrees, okay? So now what you'll notice here is we have two equations with two unknowns, which means we can now actually solve for something. I think we're gonna have to start with the y direction part of this, and we solve for FT1Y. So I'm gonna move everything to the other side. Hopefully I don't have to show this because you guys are seniors in high school. I shouldn't have to show you what 18 divided by cosine of 30 is. But you better show your work if you can't handle that. Um, I got an answer of 20.8. So I talked crap about it, and now I'm just making sure that I feel happy with it being 20.8. I'm going to go with 20.8. All right. Now that I know FT1, I can go over here and solve for FT2. FT2 is equal to 20.8 times sine of 30. So that's just half of 20.8. I'm not even gonna get out a calculator for that. I'm just gonna put 10.4. Those should be my two values. And if you wanna check your work, eh, it's not worth it. I was gonna say, can we do something with Pythag? Yeah, we should be able to do something with Pythag. You should be able to say that 10.4 squared plus 18 squared, oops, I pushed a time sign. Plus, uh, no, no, start all over. 10.4 squared plus 18 squared is 432. And then I can check that against 20.8 squared. 432, perfect. So now I'm happy because those three triangles, those three uh, sides of a triangle, Pythag to equal each other, that the hypotenuse equal to two um, um, legs. Right, and I'm talking about the blue parts right now because we have FG pointing down, we have FT2 pointing to the right, and we have FT1 pointing this way. Those three trying, those three legs have to Pythag together and equal zero, and mine do. Okay, now we get to part C. We still having a good time? Um, Judgment Day. Judgment Day is still a Terminator movie, right? Yeah. I never saw it though, because now we're getting to the point where I was no longer young. And when you get to be my age, uh, you start getting to a point where, where action movies aren't as exciting when they're not, when they're so, I don't know, I shouldn't say that because, because of Annika Hallerina, I watched all the Marvel movies because I wanted to be able to make fun of them because she had such a crush on Chris Evans. Um, but uh, I actually ended up liking them. So what can you do about that? The only thing I wish would have happened was while I had Annika that Chris Evans would have shown himself like he did a couple years ago, right? Or maybe it was just in the last year because then, because she was such a nice girl that I'm sure that that just like destroyed her with her uh, love of Chris Evans. The, hor the horizontal string is, is just, it was just, it was just a butt. Is that all he showed? I don't even know. I, I have no idea what happened. I just saw it on the news. All right, anyway. The horizontal string is now cut and the pendulum swings. Calculate the period of the pendulum. So we're cutting that rope and we recognize this is gonna swing down and then swing back. Just like a lot of you who have turned in your labs already, which I love, they were great labs. Um, 
what's the formula for a period of a pendulum? Two pi square root of L over G. So that equals two pi times the square root of 2.3 over 9.8 or 10. I would use 9.8 here. Honestly, if this was an AP test and I paid my $5, I probably would use 9.8 for gravity every single time because I'm using a calculator anyway. But I do know that the AP test doesn't care if you use 10 for gravity. Anyway, plug that in and solve it. I'll just get an answer just so you can check. So two times pi times the square root of 2.3 divided by 9.8. Don't forget that end parenthesis so that it does the whole thing inside the square root. I think I typed that in right. I got three point, round that to three seconds. Any questions on number seven before we move to number eight? All right. Question number eight. Uh, look at that. I don't have chapter 16 um, things on here, but you know what I do have them on is I think I brought them from home. DL chapter 16.1. What other things can I tell you guys about? What's been going on here? My desk yesterday was the worst it's looked maybe ever because of the number of computers and wires and everything here. Um, I have to say that I hate technology and I don't say that in like an old man way. I say that in a, uh, it, no, I know what it is. I hate you gamers because here's what's happened is when I was a kid, you plugged into the back of a television RCA cables, which are those ones with that big fat middle knob that plugs in. Then they went to either VGA or the S video cables. I don't know which order, what came first. It doesn't matter. They're about the same time period. Now, the problem is most of the stuff that I own is still based on VGA cables. Then they switched to using things like HDMI, uh, USB, USB C, USB mini, USB, all of this stupid crap, right? But I've got all of those connectors. Everything's here because I've had to collect those mostly because of phones. So, what happens when I go to try to make my computer split screen to go to the, uh, to the overhead projector? The overhead projector, of course, is vintage 10 years ago. It's still got a VGA plug in the back of it. What's on the back of a computer? Something called a Display port. Do we know what that is? Display port 1.2. So I had to spend like 150 bucks last night buying like five different cable adapters so that I am ready for Monday because I don't know which one's going to work. So I had to get every combination so that I can find that combination that will magically make everything work. Because you know how stupid it will be on Monday if people come to class and they're sitting at their desk on their Chromebook zooming with me while I sit in the front of the room because I have to prioritize you people who are at home because you have no choice but to zoom. People who are in class can zoom or look at the whiteboard. If the whiteboard doesn't work, it doesn't work. So anyway, I just needed to rant. I hope that that's okay. You don't mind that I ranted that. Question number 33, last problem and we're all done. A conical pendulum is hanging from a string that is 0.1 meters long. It makes a horizontal circle. The mass of the ball at the end of the string is 0.02 kilograms. Below, make a free body diagram for the ball at the point in the above, or this one on the side, illustration. Label each force with an appropriate letter. All right, so in your test booklet, you would simply just put, there's a force this way, and there is a force this way. Then you would look at it. Yes, I'm happy with that answer. And then you would transfer that to your answer document. So in your answer document, you're gonna put an FG and you're gonna put an FT. Okay, let's talk about test booklets and answer documents for some people here. These are people like Emma. We need to talk to you about this. These are people like maybe Celeste. Uh, these are people like uh, Deanna. You just turned one into me. What are you gonna do on your AP test if you're doing it digitally? Because what I've seen you guys like to do is you like to print out all of these pages and then do them on the pages where they look exactly like they look. That's a great idea. But I have to say, is it worth the time, right? So when you're taking your test, what I want you guys to start doing, and there's probably like two or three of you that I didn't mention right now that I should have. 
I want you to start practicing the rest of the year doing your homework assignments, or if I give you a test or a quiz, doing the test or the quiz without printing it out. I want you to do it in a notebook because you need to practice what you would be doing digitally on the test. If you're coming in to take the test on paper, then disregard what I just said to you because you're gonna be doing it on paper anyway. But I don't know that because uh, I haven't gotten any information about anything. I don't know anything, right? You haven't told me where you're going to college. Uh, the school hasn't told me who's gonna be in my classroom. Um, you guys haven't told me whether, yes, you did kind of tell me whether you're planning on digital or, uh, or paper, because I did send out that, that form. But honestly, I didn't look at, at individual names. I just looked at numbers. I just wanted to kind of get an idea of how many were doing what. Is that? All right. That was question number letter A. Letter B says write out Newton's second law in both X and Y directions in terms of your free body diagrams. Uh, so now I'm gonna go back to my answer booklet where I can draw anything that I want to. And I'm gonna break up FT into its X and Y components. And then we're back to just like what we did in question number seven, aren't we? So uh, for back to the answer document for part B, I will put that in the X direction. F net X is just FTX. And in the y direction, f net y is f g minus f t y. And no, it doesn't matter what order you put those in because it's equal to zero anyway. Calculate the centripetal acceleration from your free body diagram. A lot of you probably just mirrored this off of the example question that we gave in class, so you didn't really have to think about it. But if this was an AP test question or, or a chapter test question, you'd have to think about it. Where are you going to find your centripetal acceleration? So you look at your formulas and you see that the formula for centripetal acceleration is this. But the problem is, while I could figure out what R is, here's R, I don't know what V is. So something's breaking down there and I'm not ready to solve that yet. Okay, so now next question is, where can the centripetal acceleration be found in the F net equations? Well, it can't be found in the y direction because we already said that f net equals zero. There is no acceleration in the vertical direction. But in the horizontal direction, there must be something going on because there is a single unbalanced force with nothing to cancel it out. So I have to write down m times a. Okay, over here, I'm not going to finish this thought. I'll leave that alone for a moment. The type of acceleration is not linear. The ball is going in a circle. So this becomes m times a sub c which means that I don't even need to worry about V squared divided by R because I can find the A sub C by putting in the mass of the ball, 0.02 kilograms times A sub C. And then now I need to know what FTX is. So I go back to fundamentals of vector components. Um, if FT points this way, sorry, that looks so funny. If FT points this way, then its X component is this right here. And its y component is this right here. And we have a 30 degree angle. So again, just like we did in question number seven, I'm going to keep the angle up here as 30 and reference from there because I'm not a cosine and sine hater. All right. So my FTX is equal to the sine function. So this becomes FT times sine of 30 degrees. Sine of 30, by the way, is 0.5. But I don't know what the tension is, but fortunately we just did question number seven. So therefore we know how to find the tension because in the vertical direction, we have 0.2 Newtons minus FT times cosine of 30 degrees, right? The side adjacent to the reference angle is cosine function. Now we can solve for FT. So, 0.2 divided by cosine of 30 is 0.23. I'm just going to do a quick check to make sure I'm in degree mode. Good. I figured I was, but it's still early in the morning. So 0.23. Then I'm going to take that 0.23 and I'm going to put that in for FT. And now I can solve for what the centripetal acceleration is. So 0.23 times 0.5 divided by 0.02 comes out to be 5.77. The problem with centripetal accelerations is I have no gauge as to whether that's a lot or a little.
But I do know that with regular accelerations, that's about a half a g-force. So I'm okay with that answer. So I'm going to move on. Question part. Okay, so what I really just did right here is part C, because part B was finished right there. Question part D is what is the radius of the circle? Okay, so now this is what I was starting to say something about in question number seven, and then I realized I didn't need to talk about it yet, but I do need to talk about it in question letter D, is one of the uncommon things that occurs in a uh, FRQ is having to think about distance components. If the length of this rope right here is one meter long, then that means that the length could be broken up into length components. We have two length components that make up that 1.0 meters. That sounds weird. This would be the length in the y direction, and this would be the length in the x direction. And guess what? The length in the x direction, that component, equals the radius. So what I'm going to do to find that is I'm just going to simply, down here, say that the Lx is equal to, uh, it's the side opposite, so I'm going to say 1.0 times sine of 30 degrees. For those of you who are like, how did you come up with that formula? Let me just remind you that the sine function says sine theta equals side opposite over the hypotenuse. If you, div if you multiply the hypotenuse to the other side, you get hypotenuse times sine of the angle. Hypotenuse 1.0 times sine of the angle. That tells me that the X component, which is the radius, is 0.5 meters. Once we know what the radius is, now we can do the speed of the ball. A sub C equals V squared over R. Uh, 5.77 equals V squared over 0.5 and then solve for V. Now, before you guys tune me out, because I'm officially done here, 8.32, you guys get to start doing your video lessons. Um, what do you do if you can't figure out how to find the A sub C? What do you do if you get down to part E and you can't, from part D, you can't figure out the radius? You have to make stuff up. Um, at the very least, you would do this, V equals two pi R, divided by t, and then put in an assumption for the radius and put in an assumption for the time it takes to go in the circle. I don't know what that would get you. Of course, for me, it's going to get you points. Uh, the AP test, it might get you nothing, but you got to do it because what if they give one point for trying to find the velocity based on distance divided by time going in a circle with the, with the you know, obviously they have to be in assumptions because we don't have any idea what the time is. So you have to do that. All right, for those of you who want to know an answer, uh, times 0.5 square root, how about 1.7? All right, names are starting to change over there in the column, which means that people are starting to, to uh, move on out into their day. You guys have a wonderful day. I'm going to stop this recording.